crab, it's kind of a, a weird looking thing. They've been around since prehistoric time. They predate dinosaurs and a lot of the, the giant insects that we found fossils for. They're more re closely related to spiders. My name is Jim Hughes, and I'm currently a seventh grade science teacher at the Smyrna Middle School. Uh, I'm volunteering here for the St. Jones Reserve doing the horseshoe crab surveys. They don't, they don't try and hurt people. The pinchers can't hurt you. You know, and again, people worry about flipping them over, they're gonna bite them or hurt them, but they don't. They're very friendly. And I mean, again, they really don't see us as anything other than a, a possible predator of anything. The adults are going all the way out to the continental shelf for most of the year, staying low, eating crustaceans and other organisms they find down in the, in the silt and the mud and the sand. And then this time of the year, they're coming up for this, this big push of breeding. Once you get into the mid part of May, uh, end of May, and then the early part of June, you're seeing the peak numbers of horseshoe crabs and uh, shorebirds. If you come out here to look for the horseshoe crabs, during the daytime, uh, even at high tide, you're gonna see some crabs coming in but they're really being pulled into the higher tides that we get with the lunar cycle. So it's the nighttime you're really gonna see the increase in the number of crabs coming to spawn. You'll start seeing the tide come back up. As the tide comes up, you'll start seeing, you know, here and there, one or two will start emerging from the water. And when the high tide hits, on those really good nights when it's nice and even water and you've got that full moon, you'll see just thousands of crabs starting to pile up in the centers in masses. All the folks that are here, these are all volunteers that are here to help count the crabs. What we do is we take and we have PVC pipes measured into one by one meter quadrants that we carry along. And as we take our 20 meter increments, once we stop, we turn, sit it down at the high water line during the high tides and we're checking them at night and we count how many crabs are in there at that time. I got 21 males again and three females. Yep. The nice big one right there, she's still right there, you can see her clearly. And then there's one hitting there. There's one right up in there. Yep. So far, I'm seeing a lot of good numbers of males to females. Um, most of my quadrants, I'm seeing at least two, if not three, even sometimes four females in a quadrant. More crabs means more birds. And these shorebirds are coming at a crucial time in their flight to stop and refuel. When they're getting here, they're they're so decimated on energy that they really they would never be able to make it to the Arctic as well as have enough fuel to breed and lay the appropriate number of eggs to keep their population up. Those birds are coming looking for those thousands and well actually millions of eggs that are just laying across the top of the sand. Your red knot, ruddy turnstones, sanderlings, semi-palmated sandpipers, they're all gorging up on those high protein eggs. One of the target species for a long time was the red knots. New Jersey was pushing in very heavily for a while to try and get them on the threatened endangered species list. These fantastic birds that are you know, the size of a robin flying from Tierra del Fuego, stopping here and then going all the way up to the Arctic Circle of Canada. So it's a pretty amazing feat. Stopping here is a big deal for them and if the horseshoe crab numbers aren't here, then you're not gonna have the eggs. The stroke of the numbers of shorebirds has declined, especially those that are being impacted by the horseshoe crabs. They've been doing this cycle for thousands of years because it's worked for them and we've come along, we've industrialized, we've done things to the water, we've done things to the habitat, and of course we've done things to the crabs. So it's making a big impact on the crabs which then affects all these different birds that are trying to come here for their whole cycle.